here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, when she told me, I laughed and I'm like, will I be the person people with many years of marriage would have experienced? But the interesting thing is that um, growing up, um, I was partly a farmer with my parents. So I remember after we got born again, because then my father wasn't yet born again, between myself and my elder sister, we have to choose who will go to church and who will have to follow him to the farm, though he loves farming and I will have to go sometimes. So I grew up enjoying being in the kitchen and apparently he taught me how to cook while I was in primary four. So, and that was how my journey started. But I never really loved going to the kitchen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And as I look at the topic and the whole thing, I remember the scripture that dropped in my heart and I had to go back to it. That's um, John chapter... Um, let me just check. John chapter 15, verses 13. No, John 16, verses 14, rather. Where Jesus washed his um, disciples' sheep uh, feet and also encouraged them to wash each other's feet. And I believe that is what we have come to do. What I don't know what you're telling me that is helping me now and what I have to also share. And I know that um, as we go into the little I have, the Lord will enlarge it in our hearts in the name of Jesus. We will we'll continue to wash each other's feet and we'll daily get better. But um, my major text is from Proverbs 31. 10 to 31, but I'll drive in verse 13, where the woman rises up early to make meals for her family. For a healthy living, there are a few steps for us to take. One of them are physical activities. You can decide to start your day after your prayers to do little exercise. But for me, I do it in the evenings because um, in my house, the entire family, I have a grandmother, my husband, the children, and other staffs. And to consider all those people, these people in person, they all have different needs of meal. Particularly for my grand, for my mom, she has a specific food I have to prepare for her. So for every morning, apart from few Sundays, I have to prepare three meals in the morning from Monday to Friday while children are in school. I prepare her breakfast, the family breakfast, and the children's lunch to go to school. So sometimes, um, just like Auntie said, you just get into a kitchen and you're thinking, what do I cook? How do I go about it? The head knowledge of what you read is there, but what do I have in the kitchen to offer to this category of people that will make them healthy and be stable? Sometimes um, some things will just drop. It might say, okay, do it this way. The children will like it. It has really, really helped me. But I have a certain level of what carrot contains, for example, the vital vitamins I need in carrot for the eyes, for the skin. You have cucumber. And sometimes we just think, oh, they're too expensive. I can't afford it. But the best way to enjoy our vegetables are when they are in season. If you can afford cucumber, please go with your cucumber all the time. And when you can afford carrots, please go. You get them in other smaller portion. Don't always think it's the rich that can afford some of this vegetable. You can. 
even now that things seem scarce, even if it is that bunch of 500 naira you can afford, please go ahead and buy them. Like I said, physical exercise is good for our body, which is number one. And sometimes we want to send our children to do it. Even if you don't have enough space to do your exercise, you can ask, the, um, don't bother asking your children, can you get this for me? You stand up to do some of those jobs. It helps the body, particularly as we grow older. You need to exercise the body to help our digestive system. Praise the Lord. Um, then I'll come to food. Um, Nigeria is actually blessed with all kinds of food. Rice, millet, and all that you can talk about. And how you can combine some of them, like you have the cereals, the, the legumes, the um, tubers. But for me in my house, I discovered that... Um, some like yams, some like Irish. So the days I'm not going to be particular, I can decide to add sweet potato and yam together. And they have a feel of um, pottage with vegetables. And they know that in the house, there must be vegetable. So out of the little um, part of the house, the flour is mixed with a particular vegetable that, you know, even the boys know that ah, I must be part of this meal to eat vegetable. Um, like one of them did yesterday. And you don't have an option of, I don't want to eat this. Because I'll tell them it's good for your body. That's what makes you grow. So if you say you don't eat this, apart from if they have allergies, you try to explain to them what it does to their body, which will also help their mind. So one of them told me yesterday he's fasting just because I have made porridge. I said, Shay, you won't fast because you've taken this and this, and it is time to eat porridge. You're telling me you are fasting. You, so I make sure they kept his portion. He looked for other avenues, options, no options. Nobody is cooking anything. It has never harmed you. You eat yam, you eat porridge, um, potatoes. So today is your special fasting. When you're done with fasting, you will eat the meal. So when I stepped out with my mom, I learned, ah, he came and even asked for more. I said, well, that's better for him. When they don't have options, they eat. Some children don't want vegetables. So what I also do is I grate the carrots. Once the rice is almost ready, I grate the carrots into the rice. There is no way they will pick it. So they have no options but to eat them. So I, but when they were babies, while I had to nurse them as babies, I find myself having to mash potatoes. When people say, oh, my child does not like to eat, I will mash potatoes, Irish potatoes, um, green peas. I know some of us know green peas. Mash it, add a little butter, and you know, they will enjoy it. So if, like we've, every speaker had said, if you start early, they will enjoy it. It's, it will take a while. But the point is, keep at it. Don't give them options. That's what mommy has to offer, even now. So when you do that, they know that um, this is what we all eat in the house. There is no alternative. And for the domestic staff, they eat the same thing as well. So sometimes they want to make extras. When they cook extras, I don't bother. We'll wait the next day. We'll fortify it. What do I mean by, we'll look for onions, we'll get more vegetables, we'll eat it as breakfast, so there is no waste. And we are not keeping it for long, that everyone will not enjoy it. So, there is no waste, and everybody enjoys the new meal again. So, 
the Lord will yet give us more understanding on how to help us even in this time. I remembered in, um, before the COVID, there is this brother um, I have a link with in the north whenever I want to get my grains. And he just told me um, the plantings are over, but if I can get what I want now. So I just sent him some cash to help me get them. And in a few weeks' time, the prices shot up and went high. And before you know it, COVID came. But I remember having a revelation, and in that revelation, is like, if you combine this and this, it's going to be very nutritive. And, you know, I woke up, I was pondering, because my house is always, you have guests, you have people come to live with you, and sometimes having to meet up is also something that you have to tax your mind. So once I get my monthly salary, um, <laughs> monthly allowance, I divide it into one part is two third, and the remaining portion I keep it because there are vegetables I need every, um, weekly that I buy because they are perishable. So because they are perishable, I buy them weekly. I can't store up. So what I do is that that portion left, I just use it to buy those vegetables I will need weekly so that. Um, there is no, I've put in all the money to buy all the food and you are not able to eat food with vegetables that will help outside our medications people take. But these vegetables, they go a long way and some of them are very soluble. Um, the way we prepare them matters a lot. By the time you add um, hot water, all you wanted in that vegetables, they are gone. So there are ways you must handle them. And for example, you have your spinach, your ugu. After, before you cut them, always wash them before cutting. Because if you cut and then wash, you've practically washed away what you're supposed to gain from it and, you know, help the body. So most times you wash them before cutting, which helps a lot. Praise the Lord. So some of those things are what helps when you see yourself healthy and you know it goes a long way. Like your garlic, your ginger. The garlic, for example, is an antibiotic. So when you use them to cook, to steam your meat, or you want to make any meal, they help a lot in our bodies. And the ginger also. So um, with all, most of all the meals we have, for example, when I make my pap, I don't sieve them. If I use millet, for example, millet, guinea corn, I get to the grinder, they grind it smooth. If I don't tell you I didn't sieve them, you wouldn't know. But there are ways you prepare them. Because the shaft itself is... Um, is a fiber for your system. So they don't store up any fat in your system. So it also helps cleanse your system. So you destone them, you remove the stones, you clean properly. And at the end of the day, you're having a good pap. Yes, some of us might not have experienced some of these things or used them before. But um, if you read more, some of this food, it is from their skin. The skin is actually where the nutritional value is. And over years, we've wasted it. And if we are now having a better understanding, we'll just ask that the Lord help me to adjust. Because it's always good to learn something new and know how to, you know, use them properly. So back to what I was saying, that after having that dream of, during COVID of having to blend foods and food science, I've read it and I think I left it for a long time, but most times I re read. So when I started blending some few things, I was like, like, really, it works. So I'll go back, check their nutritional value in book and I'm like, oh, that means if I combine this, 
and this one. It works well. So why not? And that way you are equally saving cost. So even as we go about our shopping, if you are a bulk shopper, you can work with one or two persons and, you know, you buy things at a cheaper rate. By the time you buy in bulk, and so many persons here have bailed me out. Sister Ify, Sister Benedicta. Sometimes I want to buy something and like, okay, where do I get this? And they have all the information. And I, okay, is there anybody buying more than a bag or have a bag? Can we come together? Can we do this shopping? And at the end of the day, you discover that it saves you cost. You are not spending excesses. And there are things you can even use to preserve some of these things naturally. You have cloves. You have pepper. You know, um, for rice, for example, you get weevils. But if you drop in cloves there, you won't experience weevil. You have your beans too. Those who have space, for me, I put it in the freezer. You know, but some persons put pepper and it has worked for them. So if you know how large your family is, you work with it. But for me, I separate out because I always need vegetables all week. So I use that, you know, to separate, um, to buy my vegetables. Another area is um, we need to drink a lot of water. Water, water, water. Even anytime you are strong, the doctor will even advise you, drink a lot of water. It cleanses the system very well, other than our carbonated drinks. But there are other friendly drinks you can have. Your Zobo is nice. And you don't need to use too much hot water on them. And for me, I prepare it in a herbal way, just like my sister Ayo does. You have your lemongrass in it. Any other thing you think is comfortable, but there, there are a few things you don't add so that it, don't become, it doesn't become too acidic to your system. So you drink that and avoid sugar a lot. And another area I'll look at is um, we should get enough sleep. For mothers, we are always working, working, working. Sometimes, if I feel I want to sleep now, I would drop everything and go and sleep. Even if it is just 30 minutes. Because I want to get refreshed and set out for other things ahead. Knowing that I have this to achieve and that to achieve. Um, like um, Sister Vivian said, setting our goals. But why during the day for some others who don't go to work... And most times you have to manage your shop, manage your family, manage the people around you. Get enough sleep. Don't stay all day, all night in the kitchen. Look for how best you know how to manage your time so that you can rest and be set for the next day. Yes, um... We need to do our checkups too. And one person that I hated hospital after different experiences of mine. But we need it so that you know your state of health as a mother. Because everyone in the home needs you. They need you because you are the doctor. You are the housekeeper. You are the nurse. You are the nanny. You are the everything. But the nanny you employed and the help you got, you are equally their nanny. And these are most reasons why we know that, oh, I'm stable, I can push further, or this is where to draw the limit so that you will be there for others. Praise the Lord. So as I itemized the whole thing, and, you know, I was praying. And the Lord reminded me of, what about your social life? And I'm like, ah, do Christians really have social life? This gathering is a social thing, which some of us tend to deny ourselves of. We don't want to 
go out. It's not necessary. It's a party. Just sit down. Even in your house, you can create one. And just relax that moment. Call a friend. Invite someone you want to talk to. You want to share an idea or a cooking experience you just had with. And that way you even relax more and tend to interact more and know someone better. In a month, in a year, um, I used to do that because when I got married, ah, I had people live with me because my husband was, in, was not always around. So I had so many persons live with me and... That way, I was able to interact with youths a lot, those who lived with me. And it also helped me with planning of meals, you know, the young, the old. And when the children now came into, I had another experience of having to plan the meal. So you can plan your meal. What would I like as breakfast? What is it that is around me that I have access to? Is it yam? Is it sweet potato? Funny enough, sweet potato is better than yam because sweet potato is richer in fiber than yam. So if you have potatoes, for example, a little yam in it, like I earlier said, it's a sound meal. We, you could chop in your carrots into it too and make it colorful. And... Um, for soup, for example, I'm not a very oily person. When I want to cook a goosey, for example, I will rather buy tatashe. It's going to make it reddish, and I'll just drop a few oil in it if I choose to. So at the end of the day, it's looking lovely, not with so much oil in it. So just to help our taste bird so that you don't feel, I like this, I don't like it. But in it all, whatever you want to do, know that food helps the body. And you must eat a balanced meal. It's not always very expensive as we think. Like okra, for example, is very good. And if you can afford um, 1,000 naira worth, you can do it as fresh as, pos uh, as you can. So that you add even vegetables to eat. So whatever you're doing, look for how best you can, you know, apply these things. In it all, let's, um, is it time? For my summary is, remember, living a healthy life is about making small, sustainable changes as we grow older. Young people can eat, burn out the fat, burn out the sugar. But for us, as you grow older, your metabolism slows down. So what do you do? How best? What is it that I could eat then that I cannot eat now? You take more of vegetables now. And it keeps the skin fresh. Very fresh. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless us and continue to help every one of us. Thank you so much for the insights. But uh, because we are talking about healthy living, I want to say one or two things to help us. What I have done to improve our healthy meals. Um, we, if we know now that uh, tomatoes are very expensive, very, very expensive, and I say to myself, how can I help this matter? Because those of us that have community in our house, how do we, how do I buy tomatoes that I used to buy 5,000 naira for 30,000? From where will I start? You know, so I had to look for alternatives. What did I do? I don't know. Many of us know that you can cook stew with carrot. 
unfortunately, carrot is expensive. Very, very expensive. And I said, okay. What I did was to get some tomatoes. I have some tomatoes in the freezer, which I bought before. I got small carrot. I got um, um, tatashe. I got shombo. I got beetroot. And I mix them together and blend. And I have a tomato paste. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And it's working. It's seriously working. And then when we had um, enough carrots, you can do carrots and um, tatashi. Put your bell peppers. I mean, somebody say be, be what? Eh? Be creative about it. Uh, praise the Lord. Add those things, mix them together, and then meal is done. And again, for our spices, we are talking about we are not using Maggi to cook. Many of us are no more using Maggi to cook. But things around us can serve, can replace Maggi, actually, for us. It's not about talking about it. Then what are we doing? What and what are we doing to substitute that Maggi? For instance, for myself, I observed that curry, scent leaves, um, um, parsley, oregano, thyme, uh, celery, um, uh, rosemary, cloves, um, cumin, fenugreek. But, but yeah, you can mix them together and blend. If you can do dry, actually, you can do dry. Sorry, soup, everything. Everything. Add your crayfish if you want. Add if you have. Some people have blend fish and add to it. Do you understand? And then have them. For me, if I want to do vegetable herbs, I do herbs separately. But if I'm doing dry, dry spices, I can add oregano. I can add dry rosemary. I can dry, put dry thyme together, you know, and... Turmeric, very small because that one is too sharp. Ginger, garlic, you know, if you have them dry. Onion powder, if you can do. Me, I do myself. I don't buy. So you do all that together and grind and it's a spice for you. So those things are healthy things that personally I do in my, in my healthy um, cooking. Praise the Lord. I hope I've blessed somebody. So no matter how small, even if you can afford all, start with one that you know you can buy. Don't wait. Don't say, ah, they've listed so many. No. If you can do two, we have our aphiri, for example, the scent leaf. I use it to cook stew, add to stew. You can even grind it alone. It's also very good. There are alternatives to some of these things. But the issue now is when next we have another program like this, different menus, you know, will, will be um, listed. Things we can use, but if you don't see stew, for example, but some children are already used to it. So if we start early with our children, like all speakers said, to know varieties, they will not give us choices. Praise the Lord. Sorry, as you were about to round off, you mentioned menu will be taught probably in the subsequent meeting. You mentioned that probably the, the menu for good food, healthy food will be taught next meeting. Please don't let us wait until then. Probably let's start from the platform. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I think the menu, menu is part of what I wanted to ask, right? And the beginning part of my question is how do we achieve balanced diet as well as eat healthy with a high cost of living? Yeah, um, like I and said. Okay. Sorry, darling. And that brings me to the part two, which was a menu. And I'm, at the top of my mind, I'm like, okay, menu could help guide in terms of what to consider going forward for homes? Um, 
for homes, you already have an idea what you all love eating. Different homes. In, in this case, it's not just about what you love eating. <laughs> okay. Now we're talking about we're talking about healthy. Yes. Yes, the one like what she just shared: uh, tomatoes, beetroot, carrots, and all that to uh, get her tomato paste. Uh, like I said, that for me, when making pap, for example, that you don't you blend with I, the pap. I, I, I blend everything. I don't see. You don't see it. Yes, and my children had started taking that right from when they were six months. Yes, I started very early. used to sieving and sieving. I bought it my two I bought it one time I didn't soak pap. I made it. They said mommy they didn't sieve this pap. Truly I had to go through to check well. They know which one is sieved and the one that is not sieved. Yes. I grind in my house. I have my grind I grind and it's very smooth. I can make it and drink. I you would like know. it but they are tiny bits. If you taught them to yes. take that very sieved one, they know the difference. So, but what is really the, the idea behind not saving it? It's just the extra roughage you want to get. Yeah. If you're getting your vegetable and you're not getting it from that sift pap, I think you're still fine. Before you, you must clean. I take time to clean my grain. So, what I say, you don't want to throw away those chaps. <laughs> Like she rightly said, um, we come together, even if it is a bag and five people shares it, it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot cheaper. So it's a matter of, oh, in the platform, who is shopping this weekend? Please, if it is half bag you need, oh, I want someone to share a bag with me, and that way um, it will help at this time. So let's not be shy about it. Talk to somebody. Praise the Lord. It's not 1,000. It's 1,000. Yes. Things are generally expensive. Uh, no problem. But at least, even if it's 1,000, for a family of five, that's about 200 naira. If you do that, it's still okay for you. Now, some of us don't shop. Uh, if you shop on Price Pali, it's an online platform. Their tomatoes are quite cheap. So you may want to um, explore. One house. One house is the Esther. You may want to uh, um, um, you, you may want to explore that option. And then I would also want to encourage us. Some of us may have to start going to Lagos Market. Lagos Market is quite more affordable than whatever we get around here sometimes. So, you say? Okay, I'm just saying. And like she has said, right from time, me, I've always been a bulk shopper. So, even if you cannot buy a carton, for instance, those days when I used to buy Golden Mon, one carton, one carton is just six inside. But if you tell them, I want to buy quarter, which is just two. The difference in price is there. Especially when you shop from wholesalers. So there used to be this woman in uh, Shongotedo, Juniper. Juniper, that's where I've always shopped. I don't shop. I, when I see people go to the supermarket and they have a cart of 100 and something thousand, I just wonder. You know, so when you go to Juniper stores, you're buying milk. If milk in a carton is maybe 12, you say, I want quarter. Quarter is four. Okay, even if you say four is too much for you, I reach out to someone. Sister Chidima, do you want two sachets of milk, 800 grams? So I will take the quarter, pay for it, or you send me your money, we pay for it, and you know, we are able to do things that way. 
But honestly, bulk shopping is the way forward. Don't, don't uh, be, last time, on Wednesday, we went to market. We went to buy spaghetti. I didn't want to buy a carton. So we bought a carton for 13.5. I shared with someone. Yes, no, of Simply, not Golden Penny. I don't like Golden Penny. So these foreign ones, Essentials, uh, Simply, Simply was even 13.5 from one particular shop. We went to 13.5. I shared with somebody. That's how much? 6.750 for 12 pieces. 13.5 for 24 pieces. I didn't want to tie down that money. Sometimes you may say, okay, we do 25 liters of oil or 20 liters. You share it. If you buy 25 liters, you can share with five, five, five people. That's five, five liters. You share the money, share transportation costs. Beans, all that, like beans, when I buy, I buy maybe half bag or quarter bag. I give it to the boys. We all sit down and pick beans. We pick it all at once. Then put them in these uh, uh, ice block bags and put them inside the freezer. So every time you want to take beans, you just go and take beans. Even if you don't have constant light, put them in jerry cans and put those long, long peppers inside. I've stored, I have a goosey, 25 liters of goosey from three years ago that I still have like that with pepper inside. All I do is when I bring it out, I remove the pepper and blend the agusi. And then I just wanted to mention one thing before we... Without first cooking, you know, you seal the beans out of water. You find out that all the spoon settles down. That is it. All the spoon settles down. So you seal the beans out, wash it properly, and then cook it. I've, I've tried it before. It happens like that. So you don't spend time sitting down on the chair. Yeah, I feel as though the children are not doing anything. Let them sit down. But what I also wanted to mention really is, so this morning my husband and I were talking about salt. And I said when I come, I will talk about it. Now, there are some snacks we buy for our children that honestly we shouldn't be buying for them. Things like uh, munchit, the kind of salt that thing contains. Salt is sodium. If you check the gram or whatever, so maybe they'll write 280 grams of salt in a maybe 350 grams of munchit. 280 over 350. That's like three quarter of it. It's a lot. And you know what salt does? So, you know, when you want to dry fish, or these people that do eron uh, layer salamit, you know, they put salt on their meat. You know why? Because salt draws out water. That's what it does. So, that meat does not get bad. Now, imagine you putting that kind of salt in food. It draws out the water. And that's what it does to our system, too. When you take too much salt, it draws out water from your system. And that's why they always say that when people take too much salt, they become hypertensive. When people are diagnosed with high blood pressure, they say reduce salt. Because what salt does is to draw out water. I stopped eating TUC biscuits because of that. I love TUC biscuits. But because of the salt on it, I had to stop. So th these things are in the market. There's no regulation. NAFDAC is not doing what they're supposed to do. So you are the NAFDAC for yourself. I stopped eat, taking Milo because of that too. Milo, a sachet of Milo, those small, small sachets, 20 grams, is 15 grams of sugar. That's three quarter of it. Even if I'm, I don't add extra sugar, but I stopped it. Ketchup contains sugar. If I give you stew and I put sugar on it, will you eat it? No. But we give our children. It's good. They like it. Maya wants it. But I don't ever buy it. Ketchup. You see, there are some processed food. I think the only processed food we eat in the house is maybe spaghetti and Quaker oats. And even the Quaker oats, if you want value for your money, don't buy instant oats. Buy rolled oats. Because with instant oats, the fiber is removed. If somebody that is diabetic takes it, the sugar will still shoot up because the fiber is not enough. So you buy what they call rolled oats. It is not sweet to the mouth. It's not like that instant. With instant oats, you can pour hot water on it and cook it. But with rolled oats, you, can't, you, must, you must cook it. 
But someone like Maya doesn't really like the rolled oats. So what I do for her is I mix it. I still buy small instant and then mix it with this one so that she can have it. And then what I do personally, I have removed cereal from our breakfast. That's what I do. I'm not saying we should do it. But personally, no Cocoa Pops, no Corn Flakes. All those things have sugar, extra sugar in them. So I just remove it from the diet. So in my own case, my boys cook breakfast. They make pancakes, and then we also make pancakes. We mix flour with um, acha, acha, acha. So that's what we do. I get it from the, my mother-in-law sends to me. You sieve it. You have that calabash. You use it to remove it. Okay, that's... So that's even a better alternative. If you mix it with small flour, just add your eggs... And then one thing I've realized, instead of even adding sugar to your pancake, if you use bananas, it will sweeten it. It depends. So, for instance, when we went to Lagos Market, I bought 500 naira a bunch of banana. Yes. But you can as well use, uh, what is it called? Uh, dates. 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 Normal. I have dates in my house. That, so, what you do, you just... Uh -huh. So even if you don't want to dehydrate it, just find a way of breaking it and removing the seed and then using it with it. Since you're going to use water to blend everything, use it. To, it's just to find an alternative. Don't let, if we keep on saying, eh, where will we find this? Where will we find this? For, you know, it's, it's, it's easier. So I switch to Ovaltine if we must drink milk. Hey, if we must drink tea. And I don't even take tea or milk anymore. I just take tea bag with ginger. And I find out that I'm fine that way. So the things that we can do to... Um, because really, we are what we eat. If we continue to take all these things that are not good for our bodies, it's a problem. And then we are not exercising. We are not doing most of those things. It's a problem. Praise the Lord. So we've had, had a, quite a lot, a lot today. And we want to take time to pray. We want to take time to pray about... The